Okay, let's talk molecular versus electron geometry. So what's going on with that? Consider these two, oops, consider these two molecules right here. These two models are both showing a tetrahedral shape. Well, as far as you've seen with the definition of tetrahedral, where you've got, it looks like a tripod with an odd one standing up, and they both have it, you flip it over, no matter how you flip it, they've got that tetrahedral shape. But, to be fair, what you're being asked on the exam is going to be, what is the electron geometry and what is the molecular geometry of these things? So let's start with, okay, this is what, if you didn't know the difference, you just look and say, oh, it's a tetrahedral shape. So, you know, assuming you know your shapes, it's a tetrahedral shape. So this electron versus molecular geometry has to do with what you're looking at in an atom because, or in a molecule, because a molecule consists of two things. It consists of the atoms, and it consists of the thing that holds the atoms together. In this case, well, in any case, what holds the atoms together in a covalently bonded molecule is the sharing of electrons. The chemical bond is two shared electrons. This is two shared electrons, and so is this, and this, and this. So these are all two electrons, two, four, six, eight total. Uh, here, likewise, two, four, six, eight total. Two shared electrons. Even in a molecule that has a lone pair, that's still two electrons. So, consider the example of these two. I might ask you, what is the shape? Let's look at the electron geometry, the geometry of just the electrons. So if I look at the geometry of just the electrons, what I have here is one, two, three, four sets of electrons. One, two, three, four sets of electrons. This is actually, even though they have different numbers of atoms attached, the same electronic geometry because they both have four sets of electrons coming off and if you strip the electrons away, or sorry, if you strip away the atoms, I guess it helps make it all the planar. So if you, all the more plain and clear to see, so if you strip away the atoms, you just get the tetrahedral shape. So this is tetrahedral electron geometry. So let's put this back together. What about molecular geometry? Molecular geometry is you look at the atoms. Now, of course, the atoms are influenced. Their position is influenced by the non-bonding pairs of electrons, if there are any. So they, naturally, the non-bonding pairs influence what the final shape is going to be. But what, what do you look at here to determine the molecular geometry? Well, molecules made out of atoms. Look at just the atoms. One, two, three, four atoms. One, two, three, four, five atoms. So though these have the same electronic geometry, molecular geometry is different. There's four atoms sticking off this middle one. This is tetrahedral molecular geometry. That's just the shape made by these four atoms that are bound to it. Here, there's only three atoms bound to it. So the shape here, it's not flat. It's all pointed downward, kind of like a little three-sided pyramid. So we're going to call it trigonal pyramidal. So even though these have the same electron geometry, they have different molecular geometries. And this sort of thing can, uh, can hold up uh, in regards to changes. So actually, no, better yet, you use this one. Tetrahedral molecular geometry, tetrahedral electron geometry. If I take away an atom, electron geometry is unchanged, even though the molecular geometry is now trigonal pyramidal. If I take away another atom, the Electron geometry remains unchanged. One, two, three, four, tetrahedral. However, the molecular geometry is now just these, which is bent. If I take another one away, well, this isn't really a geometry, but I guess you, you, know, you could say it's linear because now it's straight for molecular geometry. But the tetrahedral electron geometry remains, even though no atoms at all, the tetrahedral electron geometry remains. So really, it's only by changing the number of atoms involved that you're going to see any sort of changes. Now, um, how could you see a change in the electron geometry? Typically that would take place through either something that doesn't follow the octet rule, like boron only has three pairs of electrons instead of eight, but or what, three pairs of electrons instead of four pairs, but you wouldn't be expected to know that. In regular chemistry we don't cover atoms that don't follow the octet rule. Um, to more typically, you would see something with a non, with a different electron geometry by having probably a double bond. So let's say we have another carbon here. And 
this carbon is now double bonded to this carbon, and I suppose we can even make it a little more accurate by adding hydrogens to allow for this other carbon to also have its need for eight electrons to be satisfied, or eight valence electrons. Oops, this doesn't seem to stick very well. Oh well, it'll get the point across. This has two central atoms, but nonetheless, you'll find that each atom has two hydrogens attached and it has a double bond to a carbon. That's a double bond right there. What is this? Well, there's three sets of electrons. We'll treat a double bond as one thing. So a double bond, that's one thing, two things, three things. Three things attached, three domains. Um, three sets of electrons attached. We're going to say this is trigonal planar electron geometry with three things attached. Molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. There's no lone pairs. If there was a lone pair somehow, this is still trigonal planar electron geometry, but the molecular geometry is bent. This is bent molecular geometry. Uh, let's change this actually to be a triple bonded molecule. For those of you who know any organic chemistry, the proper name for this with two carbons, each bounded to one hydrogen and a triple bond. This is ethyne. Uh, regardless, you'll notice that it is now straight, or something close to straight. I picked springs that aren't quite the same length. Oops, but this is linear shape for the electrons. Notice they're straight. For the molecule geometry, it's also straight, linear. This would be both linear geometry for both. So even if you somehow had, oops, I accidentally broke one, uh, made one of the springs split off. Let's put that back together. You're removing those hydrogens if you could somehow have lone pairs here. This is still linear electron geometry, I suppose, and molecular geometry as well. So that just kind of gives you an idea of what to look at when it comes to these different geometries. So let's see. I think that should pretty well call it good for that.